What's up guys, it's Tommy here, back with another tutorial for you guys, and we're talking about power. And we're going to go through all the things in Alpha 19, how to use power, how to chain them all, what the limitations are, and uh, just basically educate you on how to use the power to your advantage. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so I'm in my testing world right now, and um, don't be scared by the madness that you're going to see here. Uh, this is going to be all explained in a few moments. So to start off this video, I just want to go through all the things that are in Alpha 19 with regards to power. So if I just open this chest, so we have a couple of uh, power sources here. We have the generator bank, the solar bank, uh, electric wiring, uh, the timer, the motion sensor and the switch. And then we have some lights here all in uh, various uh, kind of power wattage if you like in lighting the more powerful they are the brighter they are generally and then we also have some defensive items as well so before i start getting into it there are a couple of rules that you need to abide by when you're uh, playing with power so one is that you can only have one power source from a circuit so as i mentioned before we have two power sources the generator bank uh, the solar bank and you can also class the uh, battery bank as well as a power source so if you're doing a circuit, you can only have one of these at the beginning of your circuit. So you have to bear that in mind. Okay, so the first power source that we're going to talk about is uh, the solar bank. Now the solar bank is a renewable energy source. Now in Alpha 19, they are very expensive and they're very rare to come across. I think one T6 solar cell costs like 60,000 dukes. So it hasn't really been tweaked in regards to the cost of it. However... That being said, like I said, they are renewable. Uh, even with six solar cells, it does produce a maximum of 180 watts. That, in comparison to a generator bank, produces 300. However, this does use gas all the time. So you have to bear that in mind. So you need to kind of make that trade on whatever you do. The other pro is that with the solar bank, if I turn this on, it makes very, very little sound. I don't even think you can hear that. It does a little hum if I just be quiet. Maybe you can hear that, but uh, but on the generator here, if I turn that on, is a lot more noisier. So uh, again, if you don't want a noisy base, then go for the solar cell. If you solar bank, sorry, if you can afford it. Uh, if not, then just go with the generator bank. And to be honest, gas is so abundant in the game, you can just go to the desert, get some um, oil shale, and then just generate um, make your gas that. The battery bank produces a maximum of 300 watts and uh, needs tier 6 uh, lead batteries. I mean, you can get tier 1s. Um, the, the lower the quality of the battery, the less power it produces. So I've got obviously T6 here. Uh, what you can do is you can link the solar bank to the battery pack. And the reason for that is that if I just turn this on, so over time, uh, these solar cells, as you can see, it's all, uh, sorry, these battery banks, uh, as you can see here, over time, will reduce in durability, if you like. So if I just leave this running for a little bit, and if I, uh, in true editing style, um, I'll time lapse this so you guys can see how, um, basically the battery's draining. Uh, and then what we can do is show you how to recharge them with the solar cell. Alright, so it's been a few minutes now and as you can see here, it's drained a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to sit here for like another hour or so, but it's uh, it's just been about like two minutes. Uh, and as you can see, it moved uh, maybe like a couple of millimeters. I don't, I can't really display, I don't know what measurement to use here, but basically a couple of millimeters in regards to uh, the battery drain here. What you can do is you can connect the solar bank to the battery bank. Oh, solar bank the battery bank there you go and then over time this will fill up so again in the uh, editing style i'll just sit here awkwardly uh, just time it and as you can see and uh, i'll put my mouse here so, so you can see uh, and we'll just wait for the bar to go back up All right, so it's been probably about like 10 minutes, uh, not 10 minutes, it's probably been about two minutes, sorry. Uh, and as you can see, the bar has increased a little bit. So yeah, 
during the day, the solar bank will gradually charge the batteries uh, and at the same time, um, your devices that you want to be powered will use the solar bank. Uh, but obviously, if you use more power uh, than the solar cell can generate, then it'll start using the battery bank to make up for that power. So it's something that you need to consider. So um, what I like to do, let me turn this off because it is a little bit noisy. Um, what I like to do is I personally just like generator banks. So generator banks, um, you need less connection. So you don't need the solar bank, you don't need the battery. Uh, and they, uh, they produce um, 300 power, uh, 300 watts of power. Uh, and it only costs engines. Uh, engines don't have durability uh, either. Whereas the ba uh, battery bank here, well, you'll have to always get uh, better batteries. Um, always co constantly charging them. Whereas the generator... Just use the engines, no durability, turn them on, refuel it, set it and forget it, and then come back for, yeah. depending on how much you're wanting to power, um, will depend on how fast this stream. Because there's a second thing that you need to consider when you're using power is that power drain is not dependent on the amount of items connected to the power source. It's actually how many items are in use simultaneously, simultaneously at the same time. All right. So as you can see here, I have a light here. This light is not turned on. However, this switch is turned on. It's only costing one watt. All right. And as you can see here, it's only saying one watt. If I turn this on, and uh, this light comes on. So this is 5 watts and this is 1 watt. So in total that will be 6 watts. And if I go over here, this generator is now charging 6 watts. And because there is a higher power usage, this will gradually drain down faster um, than what I normally do. So when you're building a circuit, if you use a switch or a timer or a motion sensor or something like that um, to control the flow of power, uh, that will increase the amount of time that your gas will last for. All right, so yeah, so that's just something that you need to consider is um, the the flow of power and also the amount of items simultaneously. All right, so moving on to the next thing is um, connections. Now, when you're connecting items up, uh, when you have your power here and you have your switch and you have your relay, uh, a relay is just basically an item that you use to daisy chain items right because um you can only go up to 11 blocks uh if you're standing on the same block but you can reach up to 16 blocks which i will demonstrate over uh in the next bit uh in the few steps later um so what you can do is with the relay or a switch or anything anything basically any electrical item you can connect up to nine different things um out so as you can see we've got one two three four five uh one two three four one, two, three, four, so that's eight, nine, and then this is the tenth one. And if I try to connect this relay to the tenth one, I'll get a message to say this power component has the maximum number of wire connect. So you can only connect nine items to one given point, and that one item can only accept one power input. Okay, right. Take, given that into consideration, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this into nighttime so you can see a list a little bit better. We have a generator here, and as you can see, I've uh, already linked it up to all my lights. And they are daisy chained, and you can keep this going on until you max out your 300 watts from your generator. And as you can see from here, we have connected all nine of those switches. And you can duplicate this setup with every single one of these lights. Uh, obviously, power limitation considered, so you can do... Um, Nine lights over here, nine lights over here connecting to that light, nine lights over here to connect to Okay, you just need to be a little bit creative in regards to how you connect your power. All right, moving on to the next thing, which is defense. Moving on to defensive capabilities and how you defend your base using electrical items. Here we have the SMG auto turret, the dart trap, and also the shotgun auto turret. So, um, the SMG auditor only accepts the vanilla 9mm bullets, so it won't accept any kind of like AP bullets or uh, HP uh, bullets either. And the same with the shotgun, they only accept um, shot, standard shotgun turret, uh, shotgun bullets. 
Uh, so, uh, but they won't accept any of the AP stuff either. I just put this in here. And uh, to use these, what you need to do is you need to power them with uh, some sort of power source. So we'll just turn our generator on here. What we can do here is with the generate bank, link it up to our auto turret. And then once you have your auto turret set up, you have a couple of settings here. So here you have target self. Why you want to do that? I don't know. Target allies. If you're handy, if you're playing on like a PvP server and you don't want any kind of strangers um, coming in. Well, if you have your private base, but you don't want your allies to come near your base, right? But you still kind of ally. Um, here we have target strangers, so people that you're not allies with, and then obviously targets on. So you can leave these two, these are by default. Now in order to use the uh, turrets, there's a couple of things that you need to do. So once you've linked it up with power, what you can do is in this camera view here, you can left click and you can set where your laser, where your camera should be. So normally what will happen is that you'll put this uh, turret a little bit higher on uh, up in the air. Uh, onto a platform somewhere and you'll aim this down and then once you're finished doing that you simply uh, escape and as you can see the um, camera view has already like saved your setting once you've done that what you need to do then is you just need to lock the ammo and then once it's locked it's ready to go so if I set this up again if I just put one uh, right there you can also left click in camera view to manually uh, fire the turret as well uh, if I just put a zombie down, uh, let's see, let's just put um, Arlene, right? as you can see the gun turret is already and it fires pretty fast, it fires pretty fast, uh, it, it's not very efficient in regards to ammo, um, what I find, however it does the job uh, and if, especially if you have a few of these on the go, um, they're going to cause a lot of damage, right? Um, yeah, so it's just something that you, you need to consider that they do cost a lot of ammo. Um, the next thing is we have the dart trap. The dart trap is basically a single box. It doesn't have any camera facility whatsoever. It doesn't have any aim. It just goes straight line. Uh, and when you put these down, you need to make sure that the five dots are firing. Uh, in, in the same direction um, the darts only come up the middle one but the same the same kind of thing applies uh, once you put your dart traps in you just need to lock the ammo once it's locked it keeps going regardless of zombie so as you can see it's uh, the darts are heading up and they do actually travel pretty far right so you can have a killing corridor and have the darts going on um, and yeah this this will just keep going until you run out of darts so the best thing to do with these is um, if you don't want them to go on and on and on what you need to do is you need to put a switch down like so wire your power to your switch and then switch to your dart trap like that all right so as you can hear the dart trap's already powered down i lock the ammo in here it's not firing as soon as i turn this on it fires okay so that's how i would recommend using the dart trap and what you can do, you can also uh, link this to your um, turret as well. So knowing what we know in regards to the connection. So um, say on Horde Night, you have a Horde base. You don't want this powered on all the time. What you can do is you can put it to a switch. And then on Horde Night or something like that, you turn it on. This will only fire when it sees a zombie. This will keep going. Uh, or you can have like independent switches. So you can just power source to this switch and then this switch here and let's say you have a killing corridor again this is like aiming down at the corridor but it'll only fire when it sees zombies which is great but then let's say uh, you're getting a little bit overwhelmed and you need a little bit more damage you flick on your dart trap a little bit more damage going on into your zone all right so um, there is one thing that you, uh, a little tip that I, I would recommend is that if you're uh, linking your generator just disconnect it. If you're linking your generator to your turret, bear in mind that this turret will consume 15 watts um, of power, uh, which is fine and you can handle that. Uh, but if you constantly leave this on, you're going to be constantly draining 15 watts of power. So let's say you're defending your base, uh, your actual actual base, and you have uh, these turrets around in case you get screamers, right? Um, 
if you have maybe say nine of these that's going to be a considerable resource on your gas consumption okay what i do recommend is you can do this setup here you can have a motion sensor which only costs five watts right this motion sensor then connects to a shotgun turret which is 15 watts room so that's a 10 watt discount on what you get and what you can do is you can connect this to that aim this to wherever you want right so once a zombie is triggered, um, then the the motion sensor will power and then turn on the shotgun turret. Now I know the shotgun turret uh, already has like the the camera. Let's say this is really just for like activating power. You can do the same with um, um, tra uh, actually pressure plates, which I didn't cover, really. but you can do the same with pressure plates as well. So pressure plate is just something um, that you put down on the ground. Uh, again, you just need to power it, link it up to the pressure plate, link it up to the shotgun turret, and then every time something steps on it, this will fire on, right? Um, so I don't know if I can demonstrate this very quickly. If I can just do this one. Sorry, I should have set this up earlier. There you go. So she's on the pressure plate. Shotgun turret is ready to go. But she's off the pressure plate now, so therefore uh, it's not very reliable. Unless you've got a corridor. Um, to set that off. So what I recommend is this one. Set that up there. Put another Arlene down. And as you can see, that's been powered now. And as you can see, you can actually see the power turning off with one wiring tool. So there's no zombies, so it's powered off. So this is, uh, so, but this is still powered with 5 watts. All right, electric fence posts. So electric fence posts is just, as they sound, electric posts uh, that stun zombies when they walk through. And you will need two of these. Uh, and I've got uh, one set up here. And as you can see here, we have an electric fence post here. And there's one on this side as well. And each fence post costs five watts. So in total, it'll be 10 watts altogether. Now, when you normally have um, set up power, here is another tip as for you as well. So if I... Um, just disconnect this for one moment. One moment right here. If I link this, uh, you can see there's like a black wire, right? If I walk to a certain distance, it'll go red, right? That means I cannot connect anything. It's beyond the, it's, it's gone beyond how far it can stretch. So the maximum you can do is 11 blocks like so, right? If you are looking straight down, however, here is another little tip. If you get electric fence posts and you walk to the same block, you can reach another five blocks over here. So in total, you can have this electric fence post span 16 blocks. And that goes with any connection. But electric fence posts, um, especially uh, if you really want to stretch it out. And it, 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 you can like go utilize this full length especially when you are doing a horde base um as i can i'm gonna show you right here so um yeah you can do this and if i just uh, turn this on uh if i get some engines all right so these are so this is turned on now this is powered and then uh if i just turn on here if i get a zombie arlene as you can see she'll gonna she'll turn around and she'll electrify allowing you time to shoot her in the head all right uh, and this also affects uh, anybody as well. So if I walk through here, I'll also take damage. They have no qualms regarding to shock yourself or a zombie. Um, yeah, and uh, one thing that you need to think about with the electric fence post is that over time, these will take damage as well. So as you can see, it's taking a little bit of damage, 199. Uh, and over time, it'll take, it'll take more damage. So how do you utilize this into a base design? So... Imagine this is your standard base setup, something very typical. You have like a little platform walking up here uh, and then you have your uh, fence post to the side. And what you do is you have your power source on one side uh, linked to a switch, which I would recommend. So you can turn them on whenever you want. And then you basically link them in like a zigzag style like that. Okay. And there's a couple of advantages of this. Um, one uh this will allow you to basically just daisy chain the power 
just makes it a lot easier to connect. And the other thing as well is that the because the main power source is coming in this direction, the earlier on the um, the wire is, the more important it is because that's where the power is coming from. At the end here is going to be your least important power line. So when this breaks, it's not going to make a difference because this is still going to get power from the previous line before. It, I hope that makes sense. So over time on Horde Night, say that you can't reach the um, fence post to be fixed. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So um, over time, what will happen is that let's pretend that this wire breaks. This one is still here to electrify. And then let's say this one breaks. This one is still uh, here to help you electrify. So forth and so forth. And so forth right? Um, and also with multiple lines here, let's say that they uh, electrify on this one. There is a little bit of a cooldown between uh, electrocution. So zombies will electrocute here, uh, but they may walk through this one, but they'll get electrocuted this one and so forth. All right. So last but not least, we have the blade traps. So the blade traps are basically uh, just shredders. Uh, there's no qualms about it. They, they're just an engine with like three blades on the side and they are three by three in dimension uh, and one high. So if I just grab a fresh blade trap here, as you can see here, it's three by three with uh, one height dimension. And what you can do is you can grab one of these and then stack them on top of each other like this. Um, they won't exactly sit on top of each other. Uh, you will need a block above to attach it to. Uh, and yeah, so what you can do is you can just... Uh, link this one to this one and then link the battery to that and then turn it on as you can see these are powered turn that on that should be powered yeah you can see that there it's been powered i'm sorry you can't really see it for this bar um but yeah these these are two these two are powered and uh, again sim same with this um uh, rules that you can uh, apply to here you can connect one connect it to the engine and then from the engine you can also connect it to the top as well and they'll keep going like that so let's say that you have multiple blade traps all in a line in a corridor if you daisy chain them uh let's say one blade trap breaks at the front it's okay because you still have blade traps rotating because the power source is coming from you and not okay so that concludes the video guys i hope that really helps you uh understand how power works in seven days to die uh i hope it detangles the like kind of logic in your brain um because i know a lot of people have a hard time understanding how power works um so as long as you just remember that you only can have one power source to a connected circuit and then also uh you can have nine outgoing power um from any electrical item but you can only have one it one power source going into the item so you can daisy chain and then do nine blocks of whatever you need to so yeah um i hope that helps guys uh, please subscribe hit that like button and do whatever you gotta do um to help me bo uh, boost my viewership on, on youtube you would do me a massive massive favor as i'm trying to grow the channel um but yeah if you have any questions Please leave a comment below or alternatively my discord uh, server is down below as well you can click on that and just find me so yeah i hope that uh, helps you all guys and i'll catch you in the next one peace